Another morning here in Thailand. I slept pretty well with a ceiling fan running, although it didn't manage to keep all of the mosquitoes off of me. I got pretty bit up in this room. There's that mural again, staring at you as you try to sleep. I'm excited because we get to ride in a Toyota Crown. For all you car people out there, you know we don't get these in America. This is a Toyota Crown Royal Saloon. Ooh, I feel like royalty driving in this thing. The owner of the resort is also going to be our tour guide and our driver. Today we're going to take a look around Ayutthaya, Ayutthaya, <laughs> Ayutthaya, the city that is hard to pronounce from its spelling. This city is best known for its variety of ancient temples. And that's mostly what we'll be doing today, going on a tour of Buddhist temples. Okay, I'm about to visit my first temple here in Thailand. Here's the skill model. But the entrance is over there. So let's make our way in, shall we? Admission is free unless you're a foreigner. One of those pesky foreigners. I don't know how I feel about being segregated from the rest of humanity. Anyway, you should be aware there are a bunch of guidelines and rules that you need to abide by when you come in here. Pay attention to the signs or risk being one of those people that pops up in international news. Most recently, the uh, tourists who decided to drop their pants inside of a temple. Here's that famous composition you see everywhere of a Buddha's head being consumed by the roots of a tree. When you visit these ancient temple sites, I recommend bringing water and sunscreen and an umbrella to shade you. Because although you can't tell from the comfort of your chair while you're viewing this vlog, it's, uh, it's really hot. It's really humid. It's like 100 degrees with 100% humidity every day in this country. And you can easily get sunburn and sunstroke if you're going to be outside all day in the sun. It is amazing to walk around here and see, to see the beauty of what is here currently, the patina and the age, but also to think about what was here. To think that eons ago people built this with their bare hands and they lived and thrived here and it remains to this day. <sighs> so it's got to be about a hundred degrees here today. 100% humidity. On to temple number two in our tour today. Wow, that's a lot of teas. Temple two tour. Anyway. Uh, you think about posting for our tour guide is showing our group how to make an offering to the Buddha. Yeah. Here you see the exterior of the ancient temple building and the largest collection of rooster statues I have ever seen. All right, we are on our way to temple number three here. This one has quite the assortment of vendors as you head toward the temple building. In fact, I never actually made it to the temple at this stop. I got lost in all of these vendor stalls and uh, yeah, the tour, <laughs> the tour was over by the time I made my way out. Now, I'm not usually one to turn down a shopping experience, but one of my viewers asked me why I've been making fun of all of the shopping that's available in this country on my vlogs. Well, I guess the point that I really didn't cover yet is that shopping here it just it's it's everywhere it gets overwhelming if i if i wanted to shop i could have stayed in america and it's all the same stuff like after your first 
visit to a shopping center here. Anywhere else you go, you're going to see the same stuff. T-shirts, magnets, little dolls, uh, you know, trinkets. It's, it becomes repetitive and monotonous. Not only that, but y I, you just don't seem to have a choice. Whether you want to go shopping or not, you're surrounded by it. And there's usually no air conditioning. It's usually outdoors and it's, it's hot and muggy. And you're surrounded by a, a herd of people shopping. And the other thing that really just rubs me wrong is they don't accept credit cards anywhere in this country. Everything is cash and there's no returns. So there you have it. For the viewers that were wondering why I was being so negative about all of the shopping. Okay, we've left that temple and we are on our way to this city's floating market. Oh, check out that elephant. That looks like fun. This little shopping area is built around a boat ride. And just a warning, this place is kind of a tourist trap. The admission price for these boats is steep, <laughs> inflated. And it's not quite as relaxing or exotic as the boat ride that I took in an earlier vlog. This one is very slow paced and you just go around looking at the shops. But it was nice to be in the shade after being in the sun all day and visiting the temples. Here you get a glimpse of the variety of shopping and dining that you will be able to participate in once the boat ride is over. Our boat ride is over and now it's time to take a little walk around the shops. And hopefully get some food. By this point, I am starving. And I could use some nutrition that was zapped out of me after being in the sun all day. And that's another good point to bring up. When you come here, make sure that you stay well hydrated and that you have snacks. Very nutritional snacks. This heat and this humidity take a lot out of your system. Here's a close-up of some of the beautiful foliage that seems to grow right out of the water. Yum, food, fresh fruit. Oh yeah, lunchtime. Check out this pineapple with pad thai in the middle. As you stroll along the boardwalk here, you get to see the unique way in which these buildings are sitting right on the water. In this spot, you can stop and feed the fish. What are those, catfish? I think I just got catfished. Here's a close-up of that water. Immediately under your foot, there is water. It's kind of cool that way. Fortunately, when it comes to restroom facilities here, you have Western-style toilets. Oh, and Western-style sinks, too. You'll see why this is important on my next vlog when I get into the details of the train ride up to Chiang Mai. Not everywhere you go in this country do you see Western-style restrooms. Check this out. This is really cool. You can get a natural sugarcane drink. And the container that the drink is in is a piece of bamboo. And that about covers the floating market. It's about time that we head out, meet up with our train, which is going to take us up to Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. The sun has set and we are waiting for our train to pick us up. There's a nice little cafe with free Wi-Fi across from the train station to hang out in until it's time to go. Look at this little guy. He wanted to be a part of the vlog, so I thought I'd, you know, so I thought I'd include him in the festivities. 
The train station is uh, pretty peaceful at night. There's just a few people hanging out, waiting for their train. You basically sit outside and you just wait for the train. There aren't any real facilities here. There's no food, nothing's open. So that cafe across the street comes in handy if you get hungry or thirsty. There's no Wi-Fi or anything like that. These boards show the uh, arrival and departure times of the trains. I don't speak Thai and I don't know how to read it, so they're a little bit difficult to interpret. Here's another guest vlogger. Look at this guy. He's, uh, I guess he's waiting for his train, too. Hello? So wh what do you think of your time here in Thailand? I'm always amazed by people who can sleep anywhere under any circumstance. I mean, look at these guys. They are fast asleep out here in the open on a hard bench. I admire that. I, that's a skill that I never acquire. I think this is our train. I hope it's our train. Please tell me it's our train. For this portion of our rail adventures, we managed to get a car that was slightly upgraded. The seats have cushions on them. You still don't have air conditioning. And it's still just as loud and creaky. But the seats do slightly recline. It's, it's a little bit of an upgrade from the uh, previous leg where we were sitting on those hard fiberglass seats. Okay, I am all settled in for my approximately 14 hour train ride up to Chiang Mai. As you can tell here, I'm not enjoying this at all. It's still really hot, it's still very humid, it's noisy. And I don't know about you, but I don't sleep upright. I've never been able to sleep upright like this. Especially with uh, the wind coming in through the window, blowing on your face. Um, not only blowing air, but also bugs and brake dust. The person next to me actually has the right idea. If you... If for some reason you feel like torturing yourself and taking this journey, bring something to cover your head like they're doing. It, it does keep to help a lot of the bugs and, and rail dust from hitting your face for 14 hours. And these lights stay on the entire evening, so it does help to block out some of the light. Anyway, this experience goes on and on and on. There's not really much to cover at this point. And since the day is technically coming to an end, I will go ahead and cover the rest of this uh, adventure in tomorrow's vlog. But I do thank you for watching. And as always, I enjoy hearing your comments, good or bad. Go ahead and leave a comment below. And do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. And you might just help me to get past the 1,000 subscriber mark. Alright, that's it for now. I'll see you real soon.